All right. Well, thanks for helping me out, Nick. Um, of course. So give us some advice on how to capture attention in a distracted world. Yeah. I mean, this is something I, I deal with uh, on a daily basis. So I am uh, I'm the director of marketing at Elysian Brewing Company here in Seattle. It's the largest craft brewery in the state of Washington. It's one of the top 12 largest craft breweries in the country. Um, and on top of that, we're part of the Anheuser-Busch network. So my days typically are spent on the phone, on a Zoom call, presenting new products, new brand initiatives, new campaigns to the leadership that oversee what's called the Brewers Collective, which is a collective of 21 craft breweries owned by Anheuser-Busch across the country. These 21 craft breweries are constantly presenting their ideas to this group of people to basically get buy-in of the system. That's kind of part of my job is getting buy-in from the system because once buy-in from that system happens, then you know we kind of go down the sales funnel, if you want to call it that. And Everybody buys our beer and I'm lauded as a genius and, you know, velvet ropes will par and ticker tape parades will happen. So I have to deal with this on a, on a constant basis. The way that, that we do it, um, <clears throat> the work that, that I do and that my team does is kind of twofold. There's like a one-two punch, right? So we make beer, which you ingest and taste and fall in love with. So the beer has to taste good, but it's hard to convey that over the phone. How do I tell you, Corey? hey, you should try this beer. It's really good. Well, I don't know what you think is good and I don't know what you like. And, you know, maybe you hate beer. Now what do I do? So, you know, I got to kind of work through that. And then the other side of it is visual, you know, how our products look and the ideas behind those products and the packaging and the stories behind them. So to you, if you're the CEO of the Brewers Collective, I have to get you to both listen to me, believe in me, and fall in love with not only what I'm saying, but the stuff that I'm trying to pitch you and believe in it. Like I need you to believe in it. So what are some easy tips and tricks to go around doing that? One of the things that I've done in my career at Elysian is I've been really focused with my team on how our stuff looks. When our stuff is presented um, especially over Zoom, when we're sharing our screen, typically it's some version of a PowerPoint deck. Uh, how do those slides look? How do they engage with the consumer? And instead of looking at an academic direction, which is tons of information, tons of bullet points, words, 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 I, as a marketing person, look at advertising. What do ads look like that catch my attention? Now, I'm a Northwest kid. I grew up in Eugene, Oregon, the home of the Harvard of the West Coast, the University of Oregon, uh, where Nike was founded. I'm a Nike guy to my bones. So I love looking at Nike ads. How does Nike capture attention and how do they capture it quickly? And how's emotion conveyed through those ads? Whether it's just do it or whether it's a sense of empowerment, you get a resonating feeling from that visual. And my job as the presenter is to essentially add color commentary to the, visual, the visuals that you're engaging with. So how can I show insight into our labels? How can I convey how important our labels are? What are secret things to our labels that are new and unique and different in a visually compelling way that almost commands you to pay attention to it? If I can make the visual compelling enough and interesting enough and dynamic enough, like an advertisement, then no matter what is trying to pull on your attention, whether it's an additional screen that's in front of you or a text message coming over your phone or your kids yelling at you or whatever it is, this visual is going to grab you and you're going to want to pay attention to it. And our team has made a lot of strides. We are now the number one net revenue brand within the Brewers Collective. We're the number three brand in terms of volume. We had an amazing year last year. And a lot of that growth and a lot of that amazing year was gained by capturing the attention of the leadership and of the folks that open the doors that, that I present to all the time. And I think step number one is visuals, visuals, visuals. Give it something that people can grab a hold to. I mean, here, right to my right, 
I've got the classic book, Ogilvy on Advertising, which uh, Ogilvy was like one of the first advertising guys back in the 60s. There's all this knowledge about how do you make advertising capture people's attention? And that's like, you know, quickly, right? Um, the second one that I try to do, uh, and this is probably, I, I preach this to my team all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And I think it's apropos in, in the work that you potentially do, Corey, as well, is pitch to your audience. Who's your audience? Know who my audience is. If I want them to believe in what I'm doing, I have to speak to them in their language, right? So there's one person on, you know, this team of execs that I pitch to who is very, very analytical. So everything that I'm talking to him about, I can go in with like story and feeling and great visuals and all that kind of stuff. But I have to have a quantitative hook to get him in. Hey, we've got this new ad campaign. It's called Open Space. It's, it's, it's marketing our Space Dust IPA. It's really great. Look at these visuals. Oh my gosh, this is just so arresting and captivating. And we see a 37.2% in lift when, you know, like that kind of thing. Like the, the quantitative can't be the entirety of your presentation, but it has to be the bait on the end of the hook that you're fishing in the river with, right? Like, because I know that that person's going to care about it. Now I know that this person over here is very consumer focused and, and she wants to know what the consumers are seeing and feeling when they go into the grocery store to buy their product, right? So I got to be quantitative for this guy and I got to be feeling at store level for this woman and be able to kind of ping pong between the two all while wrapping it up in kind of a compelling visual. It sounds more complicated than it is uh, because I, as the presenter, can direct that either way, right? So I'm in charge. I'm not letting my slides do the talking for me. Those are just enticing visuals that capture your attention. And once I've got your attention, I'll direct you to where I want to take you. You know, 37% lift and look at how engaging these visuals are for the consumer kind of uh, at that level. The third one, um, and I just got done saying this to my team last week, uh, we had the opportunity to present our 2021 plan to the VP of marketing for ABI Global. So this is the, the guy, Marcel Marcondes, who oversees marketing for all of Anheuser-Busch brands, Bud Light, Budweiser, all the Super Bowl commercials. This is the guy behind him. We had the opportunity to present our plan to him. And this is a marketing guy. So I know what he's into. I know he loves creative, a little bit of quantitative, but he loves creative. He loves to be inspired. A lot of marketing people want, want the feeling from the ads, right? I want to be moved. So I know we got to go in with that. But I also know that our time is limited. And so I want to be able to really target him instead of like, just washing over him, shooting him with a squirt gun instead of trying to douse him with a fire hose, right? So I'm telling my team, when in doubt, leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Take all of the information that you want to sort of throw up on these slides and you want it to be kind of this tidal wave of, oh, I got to get every fact in there because if I miss this one, then my whole thing will fall apart. That's not true. The visual should be the crux of what you're trying to convey and let you as the presenter lead the audience down the path. Great ways to do that are with telling stories, with telling uh, great anecdotes about what you're talking about. Um, if the stories can be funny in some sort of way, if they can be relatable in some sort of way, um, you know, maybe, yeah, sure, you can talk like higher level marketing theory with this person, but you also want to talk about how it feels. You know, people, people will never remember what you do. They will remember how you made them feel, right? So like, put, you know, hey, look at our label. This is the story behind it. And this is where it came from. And this guy hand illustrated this label. Like, isn't that crazy? And those kind of stories rather than, you know, we used a cornflower blue. I mean, like nobody cares about that, right? So that is really big, you know, less information up front, dynamic visual, lead him or her or they along kind of the path with what you want to direct. Make sure that your information is resonant towards who you're speaking to, you know, whether it's a real analytical person, whether it's a person that, you know, loves the details and the backstory, whether it's a person who wants to see how this is going to move people in the market. Um, and then visuals matter. I mean, look, let's face it. 
we are all on devices all the time now. Uh, and everything, everything, everything is driven towards a visual mindset. Headlines capture attention more than the body of the article because headlines are quick. They're easily digestible. And so key your visuals that way. If you're not visually or graphic design oriented, you know, you could hire a graphic designer for almost nothing to like work with you on that. They're contractor graphic designers to help you design these slides and, and convey your information graphically. And of course, if you want to fall down the rabbit hole of trying to figure that out on your own, there is a myriad of uh, materials out there that you can read on, uh, you know, design theory. I mean, I've got three books over here on design theory of slides. So believe me, it's a, it's a real thing. Um, but yeah, and look for inspiration around you. You know, what do you like in your life, right? I'm a Nike freak. I love Nike ads. So what is Nike doing that's enticing me? Maybe you love Starbucks coffee. What do they do that, that brings you in? You know, you drive down the road, you notice a billboard. Why'd you notice it? Was it the font? Was it the colors? Stuff like that. You know, it got your attention. So what can you learn from that to maybe help gather attention in, in your life? You know, there are tons of examples around us, I think. And, and as long as we look for them, I think that they'll kind of help direct us. So a uh, little bit of a long-winded ramble there for you. Sorry. Uh, but um, Hopefully that was a little helpful. <laughs> yeah, it was terrific. Um, what's your, you, you mentioned design theory. What's your favorite uh, design theory tip from one of those three books you have? Yeah, so there is a woman um, down in San Francisco and I started reading her years ago. Now this is gonna be reversed out on the screen. So apologies, but her name is Nancy Duarte, D-U-A-R-T-E. And she was really on the forefront of writing about how important information delivery is on slides. And she has written these two books. Now she might've written more since then. One of them is called Slideology and then one of them is called Resonate. And I got into these years ago when I started my career in marketing and they were just fascinating about you know, how you can use the, the idea of infographics. You know, there's another book I got next to me that's an infographics book, right? That's all about how, how can you convey with images because people can digest images quicker than they can digest words, right? So I would recommend, you know, check out Nancy Duarte stuff. She actually ran an agency that dealt solely with building slide decks. I think that she built, she was the firm that built um, Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth deck, if you've ever seen the documentary. So it, yeah, yeah. she was kind of at the vanguard of that idea of conveying information visually. So a, a great resource um, to look up. Uh, you know, I, again, I'm a huge Nike fan, so I always love kind of tracking what they do visually. Um, and whenever I see stuff, when my team and I are working on a pitch deck, so we're going to start planning for 2022 and all the products that we're doing. We keep folders of inspiration. You know, hey, I saw this thing on Instagram. Take a screenshot, put it in the folder. Hey, I saw this ad. Take a screenshot, put it in the folder. And we talk about, look at the color palette they're using. God, I can't stop looking at this thing. It's so dynamic. And how can we use that to when we pitch a product or an idea? And you know, look, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, as a brand, Elysian was up last year during a pandemic when one half of our distribution channel went away, bars and restaurants were closed. We were able to engage uh, the system, our system of wholesalers, our system of retailers, which trickled down to our consumers. And I'm not saying it's just because we did these principles. There were a lot more, there, were, there was a lot more at work there. But, you know, like Anthony Bourdain used to say, luck is not a business strategy. You've got to, you know, you've got to really make these moves to make differences. And, and, you know, I think trying really hard to capture that attention is, uh, makes a big difference. So. Wow. Um, is there anything else that you would, any parting words of wisdom or anything else you think we should know as we're trying to transition to making our arguments and persuading people on screen instead of in person? Yeah, one of the, and I mean, this is going to be kind of, I, sorry, I know I'm going all over the place. I get asked all the time by my teams and by leadership to talk to people about presenting and to talk to people about stuff like this. You know, how can I get better at presenting and how can I, how can I look at different ways to convey this information? And I, um, 
I always give folks a couple of examples of like really good TED Talks, you know, of, of how those people capture attention. Um, a lot of it is done by trying to capture people emotionally. Again, I, I believe it was Simon Sinek who was at the vanguard of people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That kind of, that's a big hot button line in marketing, right? But he also said people, people don't care. Um, people don't care what did they, people don't care what you sold them. They care how you made them feel. And I always love that line. Uh, so I'm a big fan. There's a book, uh, I got it next to me. I can't remember the author. I think his last name is Gallo, G-A-L-L-O. He wrote a book on the presentation tips of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, when he was at Apple, was really famous for kind of changing um, the paradigm of how things are presented and how uh, attention is captured. Um, he had a famous rule of three things, only talk about three different things. Uh, there are a bunch of tips and tricks in there. And that was my thing. I always loved looking at really dynamic speakers. Um, you know, how did they go about moving you? And TED Talks are a great, great place to get that. Um, if you really want to be fascinated at how someone pitched something and gave, drove excitement behind something, go on YouTube and look up uh, when Steve Jobs first pitched the iPhone. First of all, it's amazing to look at it, given what the iPhone has done. But the way he did it was so great. And you are enraptured by his presentation. And I mean, it's just the iPhone and you just can't stop looking at it. And so it's, I, I love looking at those examples and kind of trying to uh, dissect um, what, what made them so dynamic. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. That was really helpful. That was awesome. Um, I'm sure you could talk about it for four more hours. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, could <laughs> I won't just go keep you that forever. long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's cool. That's, you know, um, I, I was talking to a friend about, I, I'm not used to interviewing. I'm using, I'm used to deposing people, which is a totally different skill set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> interviewing. And one of my friends um, told me, uh, ask questions that's going to make your interviewee light up and get excited. So yeah. it's cool that you're just so excited about the topic in general that I can literally ask you any question about it. And you're like, oh, wait, there's this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. I mean, it is such a it is such a big part of of what I do. And what's really funny is that you don't I didn't realize how big of a part it was of what I do until Jackie told me, hey, Corey wants to ask you about this. And I was like, man, I really do that all the time. Like that is you know, probably 75% of my job is just trying to get people to believe in what we're doing and get excited about it. And I've got 20 other brands that are trying to do it in my own company, <laughs> not to say that 8,000 other brands across the country that are doing it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, I, I, and I love it. It's super fun. So anyway. Cool. Well, thank awesome. you. I, I appreciate it. That was really, really helpful. It's, it's a huge jump to make, um, the transition from, you know, essentially what is stage acting where you're in person yeah. and you're, you know, using your charisma and your personality to take over the room and maybe occasionally using a prop or two or having a dialogue with somebody, but that's a whole different skill set than transitioning to an online presentation sort of thing where you're trying to incorporate these visuals and you're trying to keep people looking at your screen instead yeah. of looking at, you know, snap book, you face, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, instead, what, right? what, what's funny, Corey, is I, I think, I think you made the perfect point. Everybody that's going to see this presentation has to transition from a stage acting mindset to an advertising mindset. And I firmly believe that I believe when you're dealing with a screen, you can learn a hell of a lot more from advertisers than you can from say actors, right? Because what are advertisers trying to do? When you're watching TV, they're trying to resonate. They're trying to capture your attention. They're trying to be memorable. I mean, go watch Super Bowl commercials. Like there are rooms full of PhDs that try to figure out, you know, how do we capture that attention? And um, I, I, you know, I think it's kind of endlessly fascinating and it's an interesting pivot for your business where folks are trying to have to, you know, do that. And what's really interesting is it's going to go back for us too, when we open up, because then I have to go from presenting on a phone to presenting into a group and, you know, right. God help right. us. So anyway, yeah. well, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate of course. it. That was 
super helpful and I can see why you're so successful at it. <laughs> I don't know about that, but if, if I can help you in the future in any way, you know, always ask I'm around and, uh, you know, I love you to death. So any way I can help, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You bet. Bye Corey. Right. Bye. Bye.